I'm the project director for um, the Timeout UCLA program, which I'm going to be presenting to you today, um, and in behalf of my collaborators. So um, Dr. Kulik did a great job in discussing what intergener intergenerational relationships, relationships are, how they're defined, how do we recognize them. So I'm not going to go over that. So I'm just going to focus directly on what we've been doing uh, for the timeout uh, program at UCLA. So the main goal for the program is to mobilize college students and to be able to provide respite for families caring for patients with, uh, sorry, older adult, people with, with uh, older adults with um, early stage memory issues, um, typically Alzheimer's disease, but certainly other forms of dementia. Um, so that's sort of the overarching goal. But there's also uh, a training goal in a sense that we would like these students uh, to be able to communicate better to be able to appreciate some issues related to providing care for vulnerable seniors. Uh, and also in the process, educate them in the process of normal and pathologic aging and how illness can affect aging. Um, and sort of a side goal would be one of um, uh, influencing the student's interest in, in, in pursuing fields, uh, in careers in fields of aging, which as you know is um, is much needed as our population uh, gets older. So those are the overall structure and goals for the timeout UCLA program. And why is this important? Um, well, if we look at the issue of the aging population um, and, and the increasing prevalence of Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia, we know that um, about 65 million people uh, in the United States are caregivers for someone over the age of 50. And, um, and in fact, this translates to um, w uh, one out of three adults being a caregiver uh, of some sort. And, and if you look at the average, uh, the average caregiver provides about 20 hours of care per week for adults, the elderly, and children with special needs. Uh, this is on top of other things that they may need to do for, their, for themselves or family or uh, even uh, while holding a full-time job. So this issue of caregiving is, is, is um, very important. And I, I, think, I think something that we need to teach our young, young adults uh, uh, on the importance of this and how we, they can assume this role and assist uh, caregivers in their, in their tasks. Um, the other issue here is that Alzheimer's disease uh, is, is growing. And in fact, it's projected to increase further as our population ages and we all live longer. Um, and with these uh, uh, demographic shifts, we expect that there will be a need for more caregiving and more cultural and age sensitivity uh, in terms of this population. Um, and interestingly, this paper I cited here in 2017, we've shown that uh, this in-person programming that I'm, I'm going to discuss with you today um, uh, actually has several benefits. It alleviates loneliness among seniors, uh, it offers caregivers much needed respite, and it, it, and it strengthens the st uh, students' interest and knowledge in aging. So it's sort of a triple benefit uh, if you think of it uh, in, in certain ways because it, it um, benefits the person with memory impairment or the senior, the caregiver, as well as the students. So uh, for us, that's a really a worthwhile investment in making this work. Um, just to orient you, I'm going to uh, uh, describe to you the uh, Timeout UCLA program at, as it existed prior to COVID. And then I'm going to transition into the virtual programming that we had to shift to. Uh, and I think there are important lessons to learn in both, uh, in both uh, versions of the Timeout UCLA program. So in a nutshell, Timeout UCLA is um, an intergenerational programming wherein we pair students, uh, college students with seniors um, who are, being, um, who are, are struggling with uh, some form of memory impairment. Typically dementia, but some people may have uh, undiagnosed dementia or other forms of, of cognitive impairment. Um, and um, we pair them according to shared interest. Uh, they may speak the same language. They may have um, um, 
similar cultures or hobbies, etc. We made our we make uh, we do our best in pairing them so that they already have something uh, in common to begin with uh, at the outset of this uh, this interaction. So they met on campus at UCLA twice a week for four hours per session. This is facilitated by a program administrator to make sure that safety is um, is assured, especially during drop-offs. Again, we're dealing with seniors who may have uh, gait issues, balance issues, um, and also at risk of getting lost if they weren't uh, if they went off to another place. So we make sure that the safety is uh, paramount. Um, and importantly, we also train students in making sure that keep the seniors safe. Um, and also training them with how to properly communicate with seniors, but especially seniors with memory impairments. Uh, so they go through a pretty rigorous training uh, and uh, before we actually have them uh, participate in a timeout UCLA program. So companionship is key. Uh, a lot of times when we tell, um, we, when we describe the programs to the caregivers or the seniors, they'd be like, oh, are you going to make my, me remember better? Are you going to train my brain to be sharper or things like that? Um, it's really not a brain training program, but it's really more about the socialization, the intergenerational relationships, and the key interactions. So companionship is key. These are some of the questions, the sort of the, the trigger questions, we call them, that we ask uh, students to, to use uh, if there was a lull in the conversation. We want the conversations to flow naturally, but if there was a lull, these are the kind of things that we ask them to do. Uh, you know, uh, that will hopefully will spur some uh, some uh, very very uh, enriching, uh, very rich communication between the students and the seniors. We also have uh, trained the students in um, performing recreational activities that are uh, entertaining, also stimulate the mind, and also may be uh, more familiar with the uh, students. Uh, sorry, with the seniors. Um, it's so interesting when um, when they share music, you know, the uh, music that they grew up with uh, um, and seniors grew up with and the new, the, the, the new forms of music that the students are listening to. So those things like that, that bridge gaps of teen generation is really enriching and uh, educational. Um, there's, um, you know, recreational activities that are uh, Rec therapists, recreational therapists have, have suggested to us like this mandala pictures, uh, you know, painting with uh, like a coloring with velvet pictures, etc. That really lends itself well to a shared activity between a student and seniors, especially seniors who have some form of uh, impairments, either physical or cognitive. They also play a lot of card games, so that's something they share. Um, I didn't realize that the new generation of college students actually like card games, apparently they do, uh, and sometimes uh, you know that really leads to to uh, some competitiveness even with between seniors and students, which is really great to hear to see. So some of the uh, student comments that we've captured over the course of our doing timeout um, are these here. I'm just going to read some of them. It's enriching, fun, eye-opening. Um, the students feel that the seniors have a lot to share and teach them. Uh, the students felt that it was very rewarding, uh, and, they, and they felt connected with their seniors, um, and that it was a rewarding and interesting and worthwhile experience for them. Uh, for the caregivers, and the, the caregivers really expressed um, 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 appreciation for this activity because if this didn't exist, then the option is that the senior with memory impairment will then be parked in front of a TV uh, for that afternoon. Right? And instead, they are at the UCLA campus engaging uh, with uh, bright uh, students uh, and is able to draw on memories. As you may know, so those of you who have worked in, in Alzheimer's disease know that the first thing that people with Alzheimer's disease lose are, are short-term memories. So things that happen in the past uh, week, in the past day, uh, etc. But the long-term memories, like you know, uh, memories that they had during college, for example, tend to, to, li to linger quite a bit. They tend to be um, resistant to the early uh, ravages of Alzheimer's disease, and that's why we choose uh, to recruit seniors who are in the earlier stages of the disease because they are more likely to remember things that they did in college. 
you know, they always say, back in the day when I was a student here at UCLA, like you, the campus looked like this. This is how we took our classes. And, and with a shared career interest, for example, there's a lot of stu students who are interested in, in careers in law, entertainment, or uh, medicine. They, we, we pair them with, with um, seniors who've had a very successful career in these, uh, in these um, fields. And for the student, it gives them a really um, unique and, and enriching glimpse of how it was that they um, you know, uh, got to where they were uh, in terms of their career um, uh, from being a college student to their successful career and now into retirement. Um, and the caregivers state how they love that their loved ones get individual attention because we try to pair them one to one or one to two, depending on the ratio of students and seniors we have. Uh, and it, uh, they felt listened to. Um, and the other thing that I want to mention is that um, a lot of seniors, especially with early memory loss, for them, they don't want to be um, um, seen as impaired. You know, so they don't necessarily want to be go to go to an adult day care center where they're doing you know songs and listening to music and stuff like that. That and also being around other older people who are far farther along in the disease process as them. So the nice thing about this is that they get to interact with bright, uh, impressionable students. And in fact, some of our caregivers have quote unquote sold this activity uh, to the seniors by saying, dad, you are going to mentor uh, UCLA college students because you have been so successful in your career. Uh, they have so much to learn from you, which is true, right? So for them, it's not like being treated as a senior or someone with an impairment, but someone uh, treated uh, as someone who is valuable and have important things to share. But I, what I make the analogy is that, you know, you have a, a picture full of, uh, of uh, very important knowledge, right? But there's a leak in that picture. So in a sense, uh, dementia is like that. You start losing memory and experiences, et cetera, the memories of experiences. But here they are, they have the opportunity to, to, to impart this richness and experience to, to students who are just thirsty for this knowledge. A lot of our students, um, because of um, you know the way our our our, our community is structured now, did not have the opportunity to interact with uh, older adults, with their grandparents, because we have lost a lot of the intergenerational um, um, aspects of our culture because of um, um, migration, because of uh, movements, etc. Um, so these students really appreciated being able to interact with the older population as well. So I just want to show you some of the results. Again, Grant, again, just to emphasize that this is the in-person programming. This is pre-COVID. Uh, this is the, the data on the student demographics. Um, so uh, most of them are, are females, but we have a good number, 30% males. Um, and this is the distribution in terms of where they are in their undergraduate year. Um, and uh, a lot of them are in biological sciences. Uh, um, a lot of the students are doing basic science research in the lab on Alzheimer's disease and brain diseases, and they like, wow, this is so great that I get to see someone who is afflicted with a disease that I'm studying in mice, right? They feel that that is so, um, le it's so impersonal, although it's very important, obviously, to be doing these basic science studies in the lab. They just feel like, okay, so what am I doing? You know, why am I spending all this time treating, uh, trying to get rid of dementia in mice. When, and then when they do this programming, it's eye-opening to them what, what the real value of the, the science that they're doing. Uh, we also have people from psych social, so social sciences, psychobiology, et cetera. And um, about half of them have had ex previous experience uh, working with seniors. Uh, and, but of course, importantly, half of them did not have a previous experience dealing with seniors. Uh, this is just an evaluation looking at their perceptions about working with seniors before and after participating in timeout. Um, as you can see, uh, they are, um, you know, they, it reinforces their interest um, in, in, um, in, in working with seniors. Um, they also rated uh, very highly their experience in uh, volunteering for a timeout program. Um, 
and they also felt that uh, it has affected their interest in working with seniors in the future. For the caregivers on the right side of this slide, uh, they felt that this was um, really worthwhile for their, for their loved one to be participating. And, um, and um, you can see how the caregivers themselves really benefited from having this time to leave their loved one for four hours in a safe environment where they know they will be stimulated, they will be cared for, and that they will have an engaging conversation uh, with students. And um, so this is how they rated it. They were able to see their own doctors, for example, or attend a support group, or just to be able to catch up with, with the errands or even take a nap. So this has been very um, rewarding for the caregivers as well to be able to uh, have a place, safe place to, uh, to leave their loved ones. So in terms of the conclusions for the in-person timeout, the timeout experience uh, connects undergraduate students with elders in need of companionship and also provide family caregivers with valuable respite um, uh, care. Um, student participants maintain positive perceptions of uh, uh, desiring to work with seniors after volunteering. And also it allows students who otherwise would not have the opportunity to do so to be exposed to fields and careers in aging. Um, and just like any programming, it comes with its own challenges. Um, I can tell you that there's a lot of uh, volunteer opportunities for seniors pre-COVID, uh, but we, um, we mitigated that by targeting and promoting this opportunity to student, uh, student uh, organizations that are interested in aging, like geriatric interest group, aging interest group. We also partnered with um, uh, student organization uh, called the Youth Movement Against Alzheimer's Disease. Uh, so that was also very helpful in terms of, uh, of uh, promoting this to the student body and, and getting enough uh, student volunteers. Um, this uh, Dementia is a progressive disease, so not surprisingly, there is significant turnover of seniors because once they get to the moderate or late stage of the disease, we really can't have them um, coming to the timeout program uh, because it will be unsafe, especially if they uh, lose control of their uh, biologic functions or if they are um, confused or trying to get out or trying to wander. So we really um, you know, uh, have a significant uh, turnover of seniors. So we have to be consistently replenishing uh, the seniors who will benefit from this program. Um, uh, meeting space requirements were also a challenge pre-COVID. Uh, parking in, within the campus, uh, UCLA is in a quite a dense urban area in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, bathroom accessibility is important. And of course, the issue of liability uh, for the university in having frail seniors be on campus participating in this program, which I'm happy to talk to you more about. Okay, so now transitioning into the virtual programming, COVID. 19 has been um, has affected all aspects of our lives, hasn't it? It also affected this program because suddenly the UCLA campus shut down in um, in March of 2020, and so we were not able to uh, to hold this program any longer in, on campus. So we had to quickly pivot to see how we could. We certainly didn't want to abandon the seniors and who and the caregivers who have been so dependent on timeout, uh, on timeout generational program uh, as part of their week. Um, but we also, and also the students who have been uh, volunteering and have heard wonderful things about the experience and want to do it themselves. And yet we can't do it on campus, so we had to quickly pivot into virtual programming. Um, so what is virtual timeout? Again, it's an intergener intergenerational companionship program that pairs college students with older adults for weekly social interactions. But there are some changes that we had to make in terms of the actual interaction because of COVID. Um, so first of all, we had to use Zoom. Uh, we looked at several um, uh, ways of doing things, but uh, it looked like Zoom was the most robust platform for this. Um, um, and, um, and especially during the quarantine, as you can imagine, seniors and caregivers were exposed to even a greater amount of isolation uh, and less opportunities for interaction. So it was really important for us to, to do this. So the, the things that we needed to change are compared uh, in this to, uh, in, in this, uh, 
in this um, uh, table. So traditional timeout and then virtual timeout on the right. So um, uh, the virtual sessions were still one-on-one, -on -one, uh, but it was much abbreviated because as you can imagine, seniors can't spend uh, you know, uh, several hours uh, in, uh, in front of the computer. It's just not feasible. Um, um, so uh, we uh, um, limited to 60 minute interactions one to two times a week for 10 weeks, uh, which is uh, about the length of the quarter uh, for the college students. Um, it's still student led um, and the conversations, but uh, there were some changes that we had to do. So for example, um, those uh, card games and uh, painting and all of that stuff that they used to do in person, it's very difficult to do that um, virtually, isn't it? Because they don't have that physical interaction. So we um, looked for online um, 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 resources like uh, visiting museums, for example. They're able to visit the Louvre or have a tour of, uh, of Ireland. Uh, maybe they've um, always wanted to visit Italy. So they will be able to go on virtual tours, campus tours, uh, uh, virtual museum tour. So we, we found uh, other ways that, to foster the interaction. Um, so we were interested and curious to see if um, the virtual timeout version uh, was actually as effective as the in-person version. So we uh, had preliminary evaluation looking at three sessions of 10 weeks each. Uh, we had 41 college students recruited, formally trained in aging and dementia, 38 seniors who were experiencing Alzheimer's disease uh, or related dementias were referred to the program. And you can see here the breakdown, uh, very similar uh, to the breakdown of the in-person programming. So we did both process evaluation through um, auditing the virtual sessions. We also did qualitative uh, evaluation of the caregivers uh, and the, the students. And we also did quantitative measures as well. Um, and so we developed student handbooks on how to um, effectively communicate and, and uh, run uh, a virtual uh, intergenerational program. Uh, they also, we also did a shadowing uh, uh, method so that the first time students will know how these things are run and to, um, to orient them on some of the challenges. Um, so evidence of participant benefit, 100% uh, reported improved mood, focus, and quality of life. For the rest of the day following the session, 100% reported high levels of engagement uh, 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 during the session. Um, uh, the caregivers really felt that they were getting something from this. Um, and again, during the, the quarantine period and timeout, obviously, this is even more important. Um, and then uh, one caregiver said that this was really transformational for the senior to be able to do this. Um, and the caregivers uh, uh, valued this because even though they were not able to leave the house necessarily uh, during because it's just an hour session, they were able to run errands, relax, read a book, things that they would otherwise not be able to do because they were always uh, watching out for their uh, for their loved ones to make sure they, they didn't get into trouble. Uh, and then the students also benefited from it, as you can see here, uh, it improved attitudes towards working with seniors experiencing ADRD. In the interest of time, I won't go over each of these, but I'm happy to discuss them uh, during the Q&A session. We also did this, the Dementia Attitude Scale. The Dementia Attitude Scale is a, is a validated instrument that looks at um, uh, students' attitude for uh, dementia. Um, uh, and what we found was that participating in this program increased uh, the average su summary score of 95.7 pre-programmed to 121.5, and higher scores better. Uh, so we found that uh, just having this interaction really helped the students gain a better attitude. So again, uh, implications of virtual uh, support uh, uh, may mitigate the, some of the social isolation associated with COVID-19, and uh, really having a remote uh, modality for social interaction is, is beneficial to the students as well as seniors and the caregivers. Um, just my last few slides, um, uh, this is um, uh, a great interest in, in the community for replicating this. So if any one of you are interested in replicating this program, we're happy to work with you. And we already have the training program. This is the website that you can go to if you would like to 
look more about you know, look about our program, contact us, etc. There's a video that I'm not going to play because of the interest of time. Uh, and I just thank you for your attention and looking forward to a robust conversation later on.